Hey Nathan here, welcome back to another tutorial. Last tutorial we discussed how to add a game class to our solution and use that instead of having everything in the main .cpp file. So we cleaned that up a little bit. Now in this tutorial I'm going to discuss velocity and how to update your sprites. So we discussed how to draw sprites and we've been doing that for the last few tutorials. You know, you've been seeing the sprites on the screen, but how do you get, actually get those updated? Now this tutorial will not go into input from either a keyboard or mouse. It will just be about how to update the sprites. And then later we will discuss input with keyboard and mouse. Alright, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the game sprite.h and I'm going to add a public attribute for the velocity. Now this is from the last tutorial and I'm just going to add on top of it. It's going to be a d3dx vector 3 velocity. And then let's save that. Alright, so the game sprite.cpp file has a update function that nothing is in there right now. So what we're going to do is clear out this comment and we're going to add position.x plus equals velocity.x. I'm going to go ahead and close this for a minute. Position.y plus equals velocity.y. We have no need to up update z since it is 2d. So z doesn't need to be updated. You can go ahead and make it 0 if you want to, but we're not going to utilize it, so it doesn't really matter. But we have no need to update Z since it is 2D. Alright, so we have our position being updated by velocity, so let's go into the game.cpp file. And inside the initialize function here, after we initialize a sprite. After the if block, let's set that player and let's set up just a random velocity here. So let's set the velocity.x is equal to 2 and player velocity.y is equal to 1. Now we have a player 2, so let's move that in a different direction so we can see two different updates going on. So player 2, velocity.x is equal to 4, player 2, velocity.y is equal to negative 1. Now we have an update here which has no code so we can clear out this comment and then we can update our game elements if they exist. So if player, player, update and we pass a game time which we'll get into in a later tutorial. If player2, player2, update game time all right now we can save this press f5 and we run it and we see our sprites being updated so let me run that again sprites are being updated so that's how you update sprites. You need some kind of velocity. And if you want to make that even farther, you can add acceleration, which will modify velocity, and then velocity modifies the position. And once we go into game time, 
right here, it's a good idea to utilize that instead of doing something like this. So after we get into game time, we'll change this to actually use the elapsed game time and actually move the objects in a based on seconds instead of based on loops. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial. It was a very short tutorial. I think it was close to one of my shortest ones. Uh, next tutorial, we will clean up this game sprite just like what we did with the main.cpp file. We'll clean up this area and actually make a game object class and leave just the sprite functionality in the game sprite. So the position and the velocity and everything related to the game object, that'll be in the game object class. And the game object will have game sprite, which will just handle the DirectX sprite and the DirectX texture, and the coloring and the drawing functionality. Alright, so I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching, and take it easy.